Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Hello, it's Thursday, October 26th, and welcome to your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. This is John Frenet. I wanted to bring this out not as an event for the weekend, because on Saturday, October 28th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the Annapolis Police Department and Rundle County Police Department and the Maryland State Police will be participating in the Drug Enforcement Agency's Take Back Day. And this is a time, it's the 14th opportunity in seven years to prevent pill abuse and theft by ridding your homes of potentially dangerous, expired, unused, and unwanted prescription drugs. You can bring your pills for disposable to the Annapolis City Police Department, any Anne Arundel County Police Station, or any Maryland State Police Barracks, and have them disposed of free, anonymous, no questions asked, and they can only accept pills and patches, no liquids or needles. Last April, Americans turned in 450 tons of unused prescription drugs. Overall, in the 13 previous take-back events, DEA has said that they have collected about 4,050 tons of pills. Medicines that languish in the home are highly susceptible to diversion, misuse, and abuse, it is known, and studies have shown that a majority of abused prescription drugs are obtained from family and friends, including from the home medicine cabinet. So on Saturday, if you've got some unused drugs in your house, turn them in. President Donald Trump is expected to declare the opioid epidemic a national emergency today, which would free up additional federal resources to help track prescription drugs and additional treatment. Shortly after taking office, Trump appointed a commission to study the crisis headed by New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Yesterday, Governor Larry Hogan said he's going to open up his wallet again and put $50.3 $50.3 million into easing congestion in some of the state's most congested roads with a huge upgrade to the traffic signals. They will be installing smart signals on several different routes. Locally, the roads that are targeted initially for the smart signal corridor routes will be Maryland Route 2, Solomon's Island Road between the Annapolis Harbor Center and Tarragon Lane, Maryland Route 2 Ritchie Highway in Brooklyn Park from Hammonds Lane to 11th Avenue, and also Maryland Route 3 from Route 450 to St. Stephen's Church Road in Crofton. Good news for commuters, and I'll tell you, that Crofton thing is a nightmare. Big kudos to the Annapolis Boat Shows. They decided to come up with Hands Across the Transom this year, which was an effort to raise money to help the islands that were affected by the hurricanes over the summer. In the end, they raised more than $250,000 from people putting money in collection boxes to people attending their opening gala to the various vendors that were there as part of the marine industry. $250,000, an incredible effort. And if you still want to donate, they are collecting through the end of the year. You can go to Annapolis Boat boatshows.com and donate. And finally, I'm not sure what to say about the Annapolis City Council race in Ward 1. Several weeks ago, the Capitol reported that Ellie Tierney had a theft conviction that was expunged, which legally means no longer legally exists. And her opponent, Larry Clausen, had a probation before judgment for a hit-and-run accident where he left the scene of an accident. Now it has come out that in 2011, Tierney was also accused of a theft at a grocery store in Baltimore. She was accused of taking goods worth $50.95 from a Safeway on Boston Street was served a criminal citation in March of 2011. However, prosecutors declined to prosecute that case. Don't know how this is going to fare for either of them, but Ward 1, you're kind of a mess. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey everyone, this is George from DMV Weather. Today is Thursday, October 26th, and here's your Annapolis forecast. We had some expected clouds move into the area overnight as a third and final piece of the cold front from Tuesday moved through in the overnight hours last night, helping temps nearly everywhere get into the 40s early this morning and setting the stage for a cooler day today after we got up to 66 degrees yesterday in downtown Annapolis and 64 at BWI Airport. For today specifically, we forecasted a target high temp on our website 
website of 60 degrees for downtown Annapolis and 58 for BWI Airport due to that reinforcing shot of cooler air that came through overnight. And tonight we expect temps to be even cooler in the 30s and 40s in spots, which has prompted the National Weather Service to issue a frost advisory for the entire DMV region of D.C., Central Maryland, and Northern Virginia, especially for areas away from the warming effects of city centers such as D.C. and Baltimore, as well as locations away from bodies of water like the Chesapeake Bay and some major rivers in the region. Once we get past today and through tomorrow's morning chill, we will have two consecutive days of weather awesomeness on our hands across all of Anne Arundel County with tons of sun, fairly light winds, and temps in the mid to upper 60s to possibly even 70 plus degrees. Then late Saturday into Sunday comes a flat-out rainstorm that, at this point in time, appears to have the potential to be in the mix most, if not all, of Sunday, and it could possibly deliver two inches or more of rain to Annapolis and the surrounding region. So stay tuned for more updates on this storm, but until then, be sure to get out and about and enjoy a few more great fall days across the area. Okay, that's it for us today. Be sure to download our free app by searching for DCMDVA Weather in your app store. And also be sure to follow us 24-7, 365 on our website at dmvweather.com or on social media via Twitter or Facebook. This is George Young of DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast. Remember, whatever the weather out there, have fun and be safe. The Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief is possible in part because of the incredible generosity and support of the Rams Head on stage. Rams Head, where every seat is less than 48 feet from the stage, brings more than 400 concerts and events a year to the area. To wet your whistle, check out some of these upcoming shows. On Saturday, a special afternoon show, and this is kind of unusual, the Laughs and Drafts comedy series will continue with Justin Scott and Spiegel from 98 Rock. Showtime for this uncensored show is 1 p.m. Saturday night is a burlesquepade. In a first ever, I think it's a first ever, for Ramshead, they are bringing Angie Portani and a New York burlesque troupe in for a Halloween spooktacular. The doors are 7 and showtime is at 8 p.m. Next week brings Vonda Shepard, who we will be speaking with on the Maryland Crabs in just a few days, John Lodge from the Moody Blues, and more comedy with the best of Second City on November 5th. Because who doesn't need some comedy two days before an election? Tickets are still available for all of these shows, and you can get yours at ramsheadonstage.com, or if you want to go old school, head on down to their box office. It's located in the heart of beautiful downtown Annapolis at 33 West Street, and for a guaranteed great night out on the town, ramsheadonstage.com. If you're looking for local sports, It's right here, right now, on the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tonight, the Baltimore Ravens will take on the Miami Dolphins for Thursday night football. Whether you're heading over to the game or staying home, there are a couple things you need to look out for. Many Dolphins fans will finally get their wish when Matt Moore likely takes over for the injured Jay Cutler. Cutler, who suffered cracked ribs on Sunday, has been ruled out, which means fans who have been booing Cutler, clamoring for more, should get their wish. Unfortunately for the Ravens, we don't have a backup quarterback in Baltimore to give them any hope. Joe Flacco's numbers this year are at an all-time low. Five touchdowns, eight interceptions, and a quarterback rating of 70. That's lower than players like Mike Glennon, Brian Hoyer, Kevin Hogan. Flacco has never been further from elite status. Let's see what the Ravens can do tonight. Coming up tomorrow, we've got some high school football games. Annapolis Area Christian School is at St. John's Catholic. St. Mary's is at Boys Latin. Severn at Pilate. Kett Island at North Caroline. Northeast at Mead. Southern at Chesapeake. Old Mill at Arundel. Glen Burnie at Broadneck. Annapolis at Severna Park. South River at North County. Balding at Gilman. And in college action, Indiana at Maryland. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at noon. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.